क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स दिस क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एंड सब्सटेंसेस दैट कैन बी मेड फ्रॉम सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड पार्ट ए सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एसिड व्हाट इज मेंट बाय द टर्म स्ट्रॉन्ग एसिड राइट सो आर सपोज टू बी राइटिंग ईच पॉइंट टू पॉइंट्स फॉर द टू मार्क्स स्ट्रॉन्ग स्ट्रॉन्ग मीन्स इन केस इन केस ऑफ बोथ एसिड एंड एल्केलाइन वेन एवर यू हेयर द टर्म स्ट्रॉन्ग इट मीन्स दैट इट completely dissociates into ions whenever it is added to water or whenever it's uh, it's made into a solution of water all right so the answer is that is completely dissociates into ions in water all right acid is a proton donor part b dilute sulfuric acid and aqueous sodium hydroxide are used to make aqueous sodium sulfate or aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate the method includes use of the following apparatus all right so we have aqueous sodium hydroxide in our uh, flask over here with the volume of 25 cm cube and then we have a burret which has sulfuric acid which has been used to drop uh yeah drop sulfuric acid into the flask 25 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide of concentration 0.1 mole per dm cube was neutralized by 25 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid of concentration 0.05 mole per dm cube all right so since we have the same wall we have the same volume of both acid and alkali over here but we have different concentrations this means that um uh aqueous sodium hydroxide which is our alkali is more concentrated or the base the equation for the reaction is shown this is reaction 1 the same technique and the same solutions can be used to make aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate the equation for the reaction is shown this is reaction 2 all right complete the table to calculate the volume of dilute sulfuric acid that reacts with 25 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydro sodium hydroxide in reaction 2 so we have the uh, we have both of the reactions we have volume of acid and volume of the base okay in reaction 1 and along with the volume we also all right so concentration is going to be the same in both of the reactions but the volume is changing in reaction 2 of the acid so we have the concentration and volume of our base aqueous sodium hydroxide over here but we are supposed to be calculating the volume of our acid which has a concentration of 0.05 now in order for us to calculate the volume we can use the formula moles is equal to concentration into volume but for that we are supposed to be having at least 2 of those quantities moles concentration and volume which means uh, in order for us to find the volume we're supposed to be having concentration and the number of moles of sulfuric acid over here but since we do not have any other way for us to find the number of moles what we're going to be doing is we're going to be deducing the number of moles from the equation um and for this we'll need to be um calculating the number of moles of sodium hydrogen sulfate sodium aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate over here by using the formula concentration into volume now uh, we'll divide 0.01 by 1000 to convert it into cm cube since we have 25 cm cube over here and then we'll multiply uh, this uh, concentration with the volume or 25 into 0.1 converting it to uh, cm mole per cm cube when we divide it by 1000 which gives us 0.0025 moles now this is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide 0.0025 moles and as you can see in the equation over here one mole of sodium hydroxide gives us one mole of sodium hydrogen sulfate which means 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide are also being given from 1 0.0025 
moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we also have uh, the moles of sodium hydroxide as well as the volume. And now we can use these two quantities to find out, uh, sorry, we have the concentration and the moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we can use these two quantities to calculate the volume. So volume would be given by number of moles divided by concentration. So we divide 0 0.0025 moles with the volume or sorry, the concentration, which is 0 0.05. We get the answer is 0 0.05, but this is the volume in dm cube. So we're supposed to be multiplying it with 1000 to convert it into cm cube. And this gives us the answer 50 centimeter cube. And so we have the volume as 50 centimeter cube. Alright, moving on to part C we have over here. Aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate. Aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate contains the ions sodium, hydrogen and sulfate. Describe what you would see if the following experiments were done. Part 1. <clears throat> A flame test was done on aqueous sodium hydrogen sulfate. <coughs> so this gives, uh, since we have sodium over here, the uh, flame test of metal tells us that sodium burns in yellow color. So this gives us a yellow flame. Part 2, solid copper 2 oxide was added to aqua sodium hydrogen sulfate. And the mixture was warmed. All right, so we're supposed to give two details over here since the marks are two. Um, so the first um, first change that we observe over here is that the solid copper oxide is going to be dissolving as it will react with sodium hydro hydrogen sulfate. Right, so solid dissolves. Now, uh, because this copper oxide reacts with sodium hydrogen sulfate, resulting in the production of copper sulfate, um, we'll be having a blue solution, which is the color of copper sulfate solution. So, blue solution forms. D part 1, a test can be done to show the presence of sulfate ion by sulfate yeah, sulfate ion by adding acidified aqueous barium chloride or acidified aqueous barium nitrate. State the observation that would show that sulfate ion is pre sulfate ion is present. All right. So uh, if we have sul uh, the sulfate ion in our solution with either of these compounds, barium nitrate or barium chloride, the barium in this um, compound will react with the sulfate ion forming the compound barium sulfate precipitate which is also white in color so we'll uh, notice a white precipitate right part two write an ionic equation for the reaction that occurs if sulfate ion is present include state symbols okay so this sulfate ion is going to be reacting with barium ion so barium ion has a charge of 2 plus and it's going to be in aqueous form this reacts with the sulfate ion, which is also in aqueous form. And this gives us the compound barium sulfate. And since this is going to be a precipitate, it will be in solid form. Okay, that's it. Question number seven, addition polymerization and condensation polymerization are two types of polymerization. Part A, 
which functional group is present in all monomers which are used to make addition polymers all right so in addition polymers we have the same monomer and the monomer is always supposed to have carbon to carbon double bond so that whenever we polymerize the monomers the double bonds break up and join with other carbon atoms so there's always a carbon to carbon double bond double bond b part of an addition polymer is shown how many monomer units are needed to make the part of addition polymer shown all right so um each of the monomers is supposed to have at least two carbon atoms with a single double bond and over here we have um six carbon backbone atoms which means we have three monomers since each monomer is supposed to have two carbon atoms and we have six so we have three monomer units over here um let's have a simple look at what the monomer is supposed to look like all right so this is the monomer since um each monomer had two carbon atoms and it also had two uh, a double bond between between these two backbone carbon atoms and the rest is sim same now we're supposed to show all of the bonds so let's open up these bonds this is the methyl group which is uh, all right so this carbon is showing the methyl group which we add had over here all right similarly over here we have the methyl group opened up okay and we're going to be calling it or uh, since we have um, these four atoms of carbon this is going to be butene but we're supposed to be mentioning we're supposed to show the position of the double bond this double bond is um, it is coming with the second carbon atom so this is supposed to be but to in which shows the position of this double bond but two means the double bond is with the second carbon atom and in is because we have this double bond so we have our name as but to in with the empirical formula of the monomer we had a uh, total four carbon atoms and eight ox hydrogen atoms and then when we simplify it c4h8 we get the simplest form that we get is ch2 which is the empirical formula and the polymer also uh, for we have the same number of carbon and hydrogen when simplified which is also ch2 The method used to detect the monomers after they have been separated. All right. So whenever we use chromatography, sometimes uh, the monomers of the polymers are colorless. So to identify them or to detect them, the way that we do this is that we spray locating agents onto the chromatography paper after the process has been run. So using locating agents. The method used to identify the monomers after they have been separated and detected. So to identify monomers in chromatography, we always use RF values by calculating RF values. 
Alright, moving on to the part one. The synthetic polyamides are condensation polymers. Name a synthetic polyamide. An example of this is nylon. Part two, synthetic polyamides can be made by reacting carboxylic acids and am amines. Name the other substance that is produced in this reaction. All right, so this is a condensation polymerization reaction where we always have a byproduct. And in this case, this one is water. All right, that's it. We're completed with this paper.